on gram stain micrograph we can see this organism as gram negative cocobacillus very tiny small organisms very tiny on gram staining bordetella pertussis organisms and these bordetella pertussis organisms causes whooping cough in humans and it is also called as a pertussis infection these organisms are very small gram negative aerobic cocobacillus organisms they are oxidase positive, catalase negative and urease negative. These organisms require special growth factors in the medium. So it requires a special medium for the growth. So the normal growth factors that this organism requires is nicotinamide, charcoal, salts, amino acids, etc. The special medium to grow this organism is bordered jengu media or region lovi media. These two terms are used interchangeably. And on these media, these organisms takes three to seven days for its growth. The colonies are very small, transparent, and they appear as mercury droplet. And we can see hemolysis on these mediums. And these organisms are strictly human pathogens. Virulent factors. The virulent factors for addition on human tissues are filamentous hemagglutinin and this filamentous hemagglutinin always binds to sulfatide receptors on the ciliated cells and one more adhesive factor is pertussis toxin B unit and this pertussis toxin B unit always can attach to ciliated cells with lactosyl ceramide receptors and glycolipid receptors and phagocytes these organisms can also have fimbria and paractin but we don't have any evidence that these fimbria and paractin are useful for addition. These organisms can secrete exotoxins. It can secrete invasive adenylate cyclase exotoxin and this adenylate cyclase exotoxin is always activated by call modulin which is present on human cells and this adenylate cyclase toxin catalyzes ATP to cyclic AMPs. So whenever the cyclic AMPs of the cells are increased, here we can see the picture, this adenylase cyclase toxin is activated by Cal modulin. So whenever it gets activated, ultimately it increases the cellular cyclic AMPs. By increasing cyclic, cy um, cellular cyclic AMPs, the water molecules will leak out from the cells and ultimately we can see the death of the cells. It secretes one more toxin called pertussis toxin. It is a A and B type of toxin. In this toxin, we can see six subunits, S1, S2, S3, 2S4 and S5. The A unit is a lethal, lethal toxin, lethal part of the pertussis toxin. And in this A unit, it has a subunit called S1 subunit inside it. And this A unit, ADB ribosylates the GI protein of the cells and ultimately decreases the cellular signal transduction. By decreasing the cel cellular signal transduction, it inhibits chemo chemotaxis of the cells, it inhibits phagocytosis and it inhibits oxidative bursts. And this A unit can also increase the lymphocytosis because it can decrease the signal transduction so the lymphoid organ consisting of lymphocytes all the lymphocytes from the lymphoid organs will enter into the bloodstream so by increasing the number of lymphocytes in the bloodstream can also alters the immune mechanism and we can also see decreased mitogenic activity of lymphocytes we can see alteration of hormonal activities especially increased insulin can lead to cause hypoglycemia and increased histamine levels causes increased capillary permeability that ultimately leads to hypertension and shock. Especially the cardiac failure can occur because of these conditions. The B unit is for binding. The S2 subunit of B toxin attaches to lactosyl ceramide receptors of ciliated cells. S3 subunit always attaches to glycolipid receptors and phagocytes and S4 and S5 
we don't have receptors and the receptors are unknown for these two subunits S4, 2 S4s and 1 S5 subunits. Tracheal cytotoxin. This tracheal cytotoxin is a peptidoglycan fragment, a cell wall fragment and this tracheal cytotoxin always binds to ciliated epithelial cells and after attachment to ciliated epithelial cells it inhibits ciliary movement and it can also destruct the ciliated epithelial cells. Here in the right side we can see the picture of ciliated epithelial cells. You can see this cartoon representation of <coughs> cursor mark, cursor pointing is the organism by Bordetella pertussis organism which is attaching to the ciliated cells with the help of tracheal toxin and with the help of filamentous hemagglutinin. So by binding to the cilia it inhibits the ciliary movement and it can also destruct the cilia, ciliated epithelial cells. And these tracheal cytotoxins can also stimulate the T cells and phagocytes to secrete more interleukin 1 cytokinins. So by having more interleukin 1s inside the human body that can ultimately leads to produce fever and anorexia. These organisms has lipopolysaccharides LPS. These LPS are nothing but endotoxins and this organism can secrete large quantities of this endotoxin that can lead to cause shock and cardiac arrest. Epidemiology. These organisms normally seen in nasopharyngeal areas in infected people and they are transmitted by droplet nucleus and higher incidence rate we can see in children below one year age group and nowadays no incidence because of wide vaccination to kids and it is seen in adults and these adults act as a carriers because they already have the immunity against these organisms. So here we can see the animation of pathogenesis. The Bordetell organisms came into the human respiratory epithelium and they will get attached to the ciliated epithelium with the help of filamentous hemagglutinin, with the help of pertussis toxin and after attachment they will secrete <coughs> tracheal cytotoxin. So by secreting tracheal cytotoxin it damages the cilius. So after damaging the cilius it secretes the other toxins, pertussis toxin and adenylacyclase toxin which can destruct the cells and these organisms will enter into the bloodstream and can cause a damage in the human tissues which can ultimately suppress our immune system and leads to produce the symptoms. Because of damaging the ciliated respiratory epithelium it can produce the cough stimulation so the paroxysmal coughing is seen majorly because of damaging the cilia and ciliated epitheliums which can stimulate to produce the coughs. Clinical features. In clinical features these infection always seen in three stages. Caterol stage, paroxysmal stage, convalescent stage. So duration of incubation will be 7 to 10 days and after 7 to 10 days the patient start to have Caterol stays for 1 to 2 weeks. In this stage, we can see the symptoms rhinaria, malaise, fever, sneezing, anorexia. So after that, the patient, if it untreated patients, enters into paroxysmal stage, which will stay for 2 to 4 weeks. We can see paroxysmal coughing, the repetitive coughing, almost 15 times per day with whoops and patients always have vomitings and you can see leukocytosis increased leukocyte count inside the bloodstream and after two to four weeks the patient enters untreated patient enters into convalescent stage which can stay for three to four weeks or more longer and you can't see any symptoms at this stage diminished paroxysmal coughing and we can start to see the secondary complications like pneumonia seizures encephalopathy in these stages. 
The pneumonia mainly caused by staph areas and streptococcus pneumonia as a secondary bacterial infection. So in these periods, in these stages, <coughs> we can see the organisms whenever we take a nas nasopharyngeal swab, we can see the organism culturing of the organism, growth of the organism in culture mediums, especially in keterol stage and in the early stages of paroxysmal stage. And after that, we can't get this organism from the nasopharyngeal areas because these organisms enter into the bloodstream and which can lead to cause convalescent phase. So we can culture, we can take the organism specimens and we can see the growth of this organism in culture mediums in cataract stage, most contagious stage, where we have we can see a lot of organisms in nasopharyngeal areas. So we can see the clinical features in cataract stage, usually 7 to 10 days or it can increase 4 to 21 days. You can see rhinitis also called as coryza, low grade fever, mild occasional coughing and afterwards it can change, it can progress to paroxysmal stage which can stay for one to six weeks sometimes or it can prolong even. We can see paroxysms of coughs, difficulty in expressing, uh, expelling this mucus can lead to produce this paroxysmal coughing in the tracheobronchial trees and long aspiratory effect accompanied by high pitched woof at the end of paroxysms. You can see cyanosis, vomiting, exhaustions and this paroxysmal coughing you can see 15 times in one day and increased frequency during the first one to two weeks and it can also remain for two to three weeks later even and then gradually decreases and afterwards the patient enters into convalescent phase and it is usually seven to ten days or it can increase or it can be in between four to twenty one days and you can't see any symptoms, gradual recovery, we can't see any symptoms. Less persistent paroxysmal coughing that disappears within two to three weeks. And paroxysms of coughs often reoccur with subsequent respiratory infections for many months after the onset of pertussis infection. So we can see the picture of paroxysmal coughing and it starts with rhinitis in cataract stage and we can see the video of uh, paroxysmal coughing in child. This is the wolf we can hear. Complications in untreated patients, especially in children, we can see pneumonia by staph areas or by strep pneumonia. And in these patients, we can see seizures, encephalopathy, and 1% of untreated patients will die. In adults, we can see weight loss because of increased IL-1, interleukin-1, and tumor necrosis factors, urinary inco incontinence, syncope, and because of severe coughing, we can also see rib fractures in adult patients. Diagnosis, the specimens has to be taken from the nasopharyngeal areas, post or per nasal swab, and we shouldn't use any cotton swabs, or we, can, we have to use cough plates. The culture, we can do culture by the specific media called body jengu media. On this media we can see the mercury drop feral appearance of colonies and we can also call this body jengu media as vision lovi media and by gram staining we can see this organisms as gram negative cocobacillus. In fluorescent antibody staining we can observe this organisms as fluorescent appearance. And for rapid diagnosis, we can do polymerized chain reaction. And here we can see the small mercury droplet colonies on body jengu media. 
treatment erythromycin is the drug of choice we can also use clarithromycin as an alternative drug prevention is by vaccine vaccine is extremely effective this vaccine is given with uh, diphtheria tetanus so it is this vaccine is a combined vaccine as DTP, diphtheria, tetanus and pertussis toxin.